All right. All right. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode five of the Real Raw Truth podcast with Kayla, Jane, and Sammy. Um, we are here with our first guest this week, which you're so excited about. Um, you guys have probably heard us talk about him a lot. So it was only fitting to have Jason Theobald on our podcast as our first guest this week. All right. I'm honored. <laughs> So we're going to go through a heck of a lot um, today. We have a really good one and a lot of good notes to go through, I think. But um, as always, like we got to go through like how our week's been, what's been going on with everyone. So um, Sammy, how's your week been? You always pick me first. <laughs> Can I? I'm um, sorry. You don't have to go first. You know, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> um, it was really good. So I went to Orlando this last weekend and I had three competitors competing um one newer one she did great she placed and then another one who just did better than the last um you know the last show and then I had my wellness girl who came out of nowhere and she surprised everybody so I saw that that was freaking cool she literally like it was amazing she just radiated on stage so it's awesome I'm excited to bring her to nationals so awesome so exciting Jane how was your week Good, good, good. Um, nothing too crazy going on over here. Spent some time with family over the weekend. And then I am launching a seven day habit stacking challenge, which will go live on Sunday. So I'm excited for that. It's for ladies only. Um, sorry, Jason, you can't. <laughs> I need to stack some habits, some better habits. I got plenty of bad ones. So this is healthy habit stacking only. Uh. My goal is to help people kind of break down small things they can do throughout an entire week to, to get to a big win. So that launching that Sunday, but other than that, we're just rocking and rolling with business. Nice. Jane, are you still taking people on for that? Yes. Okay. I will send me the link for that and I will link it in our show notes. So if people want to join, is it, it, does it cost anything to join? Free. Perfect. It's okay. Fun. So people, no excuses. Join Jane's seven day challenge because it's only seven days. <laughs> exactly um I guess I did the same this weekend I just hung out with family um we went back home um since my dad's been in the hospital well not anymore he's in the nursing home now but he um we he really wanted to like clean out his house and stuff like that so we were cleaning out the house like all the things um and my sister brought her kids with so we had like a pool day with them um it was super fun except for Declan my little nephew came and he was sick and we didn't think like it was anything because he was like running around totally fine like and then he just like stopped and like throw up and we're just like he's a kid like it's whatever he's three yeah Yeah. and then (laughs) lo and behold like early Monday morning both my sisters just at the same time just like horrible flu like terrible terrible flu for like 12 hours and I'm like oh dear god like please like save me from this and I was okay but I didn't Definitely. think you could get the flu in the fucking summer. That's a thing, huh? That's what I thought. Yeah. And that's why we were like, oh, it's fine. Like, he's just like right. he's coming off of like some medicine from like being on having strep throat. Like, so we were, just didn't think anything of it. And he was like playing like everything, like didn't even seem like he was sick. Right. Apparently he was. So yeah. Midwest for you. Yeah, literally. Um, but all in all, it was good. My dad had um, a lot of fun, I think. He, he can't really say much anymore. Um, so he just kind of like gives us thumbs up or like get him to smile and stuff and that's that's really nice so um (laughs) he can talk a little bit and he was so we rigged up this thing you guys for to to cart him around my friend um our family friend has like this old man and he just like rigged it up to like get my dad in there we strapped him down with ratchet straps in his wheelchair (laughs) drove him around (laughs) and he was just like all right let's go he's like let's go and he would just do this like let's go let's go um he was just ready to go and uh my sister was taking a little bit and he was like telling me like a word and I like couldn't hear him couldn't hear him like like he's like whispering let's get really close to him and he's I thought he was saying like snow blowers and I was like snow blower and he starts laughing um but he was saying slow pokes so I figured it out eventually but we're like <laughs> so that's just been our like struggle lately is just that but I mean it's it's all good like you know he's not like in pain or anything so that's like the good thing and we're just enjoying time while we can so that's all you can do but well other than that sorry to hear that that's, <laughs> a, that's a rough one yeah it's I mean it's okay like we're we're all doing okay like obviously the end is not going to end very well but you know we're just trying to stay positive through it all so it's all you can do but yeah. um so 
besides that point, um, we do have a really good uh, episode for you guys today. Um, we really wanted to go through and talk to Jason about just like everything that he's done with the businesses so far, how we're all connected to him. Um, you know, I think Jason to all of us is a coach, mentor, and a friend too. Like, I know I, I think a little bit of an intro part of this was kind of go through like how each of us know Jason, I think would be a good part of it, how we got connected. Um, so I guess the way that I was connected through Jason was 2020. Um, I was having lots of hormone issues. I knew I needed to get labs done and reached out. Jason helped fix me. Um, there's a heck of a lot of story there, but we can go listen to other episodes for that. Um, and then through that, I started learning more about functional health. I'm going to PECs and now I'm on the team as a coach. So that's kind of um, how that went. Oh, and of course, a really big issue, big part of that is Jason helped me get my pro card. So that was really fun. Um, so yeah, Hello. that's how I know and am connected with Jason. So um, Jane, how about you? You can go next. All right. So years ago, Jason, I heard you speak at one of the seminars. Um, I was very part-time coaching. You know, I had done some natural bodybuilding shows and I was just interested in helping more clients. And honestly, I can't even remember where or when, which I was with Cliff and, um, and John Gorman, but you were there. Yep. And I heard you speak. And to be honest, I was like kind of intimidated by you, but you were so smart. And I was like, who, like, I gotta find out more about this guy. And so I was competing naturally. I went, I went a little hard, probably too hard naturally for, for years on end. And I kept having really bad off seasons. I wasn't getting better. I knew something wasn't right because I was working so hard. Um, I got my pro card in, in two natural organizations, OCB and IPE. And coming off of my last show, gosh, two and a half, almost three years ago, because that's how long I've been with you now. Um, I just knew I needed to do something different. And so I had been following you for a few years and, and I reached out, was just like, listen, like this is what's happened. Something's not right. It was the first time I did labs was with you. We found out my testosterone was just completely plummeted, tried to get it back naturally. You know, I eventually opted for the, for the TRT route. And since then we've been together and now you can't get rid of me. And now I'm coaching on your team. Yeah. <laughs> Mentor, friend, all of the things, coach, you, you do it all for me. So thank I'm glad you. Glad to have you. I'm glad to have you on the team. <laughs> So I found Jason, I was actually working with a body fusion and I have been competing for years and I've always had, you know, GI issues throughout my preps, like especially post-show. Um, and I just kept prepping. I just kept running myself to the ground. Eventually my body would respond when I would take it to extreme measures. And so it wasn't until actually, so I did my pro season, um, 2021. And then right afterwards, I, I had like a few meals off, but I was still following my reverse pretty, pretty closely. And it was crazy because I just blew up. Like my gut started just getting really inflamed. Um, I just didn't feel right. I was super fatigued, had no energy, everything like that. And so I saw actually a couple of different people before I even met Jason. And so I was spending multiple dollars on, you know, all these testings and, you know, their protocols and nothing was like really working. It would work temporarily. And then it wasn't really working. It wasn't very specific. And so honestly, um, I think it was actually Dom Cardone who actually brought it up to me. I, I don't even think I even told you that Jason, but yeah. So <laughs> Dom was the one who actually told, um, my coach at the time that I should look into you. So I started looking at your stuff on Instagram, started reaching out to you. And then it was really cool because you actually like responded with like actual detailed responses you weren't even my coach and I'm like what do I do you were you were helping me like guiding me and I'm like okay I need to just jump on a consult call with him so we jumped on a consult call and honestly like after that I just knew that you were very intelligent I looked at like your Instagram posts like your you know your testimonials things like that and so I just bit the bullet and I worked with you even though I was super skeptical at first I was very skeptical because I you know, I've already done like so many protocols, things like that, that haven't worked. And so, you know, you were just so specific and you truly guided me. You told me to do all the opposite things. I literally thought you were crazy. Like <laughs> you're telling me not to train. I'm like, what do you mean? Don't train. Like what? Like this has nothing to do with my gut. <laughs> so like, it was just doing the whole complete opposite. And even now, like, you know, well, so I worked with you, we were seeing really great results. And then, you know, I stopped working with you when I was probably not, I thought I was healthy. I'm like, oh, we're good. My gut's healthy. We're good. We did a whole sequel protocol. 
And then, and so I thought I could prep at that point, even though my progesterone and estrogen were not at like optimal levels. So I ended up trying to compete. Um, obviously that didn't go so well. Um, and I'm back working with Jason. So, uh, <laughs> here we are. Um, you can't get rid of me either. Can't get rid of Sammy either. <laughs> we, we've got her rolling it'll we'll get her there I know she's antsy to get back on stage so we'll... uh, I know I'm like oh it's been two years of long hard work but I know it's going to pay off like I'm already feeling so much better and I've just seen so many benefits so and then now I'm in your mentorship program I've just been awesome. learning so much going working with you like for me but then also like you've just been such a good mentor that I mean I don't even know how to thank you enough <laughs> so Jason, yeah. question for you, since all three of us have similar stories, different, but this is not news to you um, because you, you hear it, you see it all of the time with competitors. Now, you know, on our podcast, we're talking mostly to bikini and, and figure competitors. Um, but, you know, what advice would you give to somebody that's coming off of competing or somebody who wants to compete? Like, what are the foundational things that you need from that individual to even say, yeah, you're, you're ready to compete for the first time or ready to compete again? Well, you know, I always say that you should pre-prep. So I think, you know, anyone listening out there, whether you're going to, if you're going to hire a coach, don't wait till the last minute. Um, hire someone that, has not just an ability to adjust macros up and down. They don't have to be as functional as I am, but just someone that has some knowledge of labs and health on some level. Um, But you need to get with them early. You know, your calories need to be high enough. You should be on low cardio. You should be able to maintain your weight on, you know, 19 to 2100 calories without blowing up. Digestion should be good. Daily bowel movements, not bloating, not gassy. Um, And you should at least look at your labs. I mean, hormonally, you want to be in a decent spot. They don't have to be perfect. But, you know, progesterone, if you're talking women, estradiol in good ranges, uh, you know, thyroid, good ranges, all these things that we can look at. And we can get in more detail, but really, you want to have a pre-prep area. You don't want to just go into prep on 1,500 calories, doing an hour of cardio already, and think that's going to be a great spot, especially if you're already struggling just to maintain your weight. Something else is going on, and you might need to take a step back, and a good coach will recognize that. I'll recognize it right away and say, hey, I can get you to stage, but I'm not starting at 1,500 calories. I, I'm going to look at your labs because you're telling me you know you're not sleeping great. You're not doing this. We're going to fix everything up. I'm going to get your calories up, and then we'll have a discussion. Um, and some people don't like that. And it's great. Go find someone that's going to put you on 900 calories and two hours of cardio and half of it will be hit. And you know, you'll be back to me next time now in worse position. Um, so you need to pre-prep as far as after, um, you know, after is a time to pull back. Um, there are some people, I will say more men can kind of have that little four or five week push after a show. A lot of times, Uh, especially if they're on pads and we can kind of get some quick muscle. And I'm not saying there aren't some outlier women, but more often than not, most of my women need to kind of, you know, pull back, you know, training needs to be scaled back. Cardio needs to be scaled back. Um, I even like to flush them right away to get the calories up quickly. Like, so say they're at 1200, I can get them up to 2100 like that. They won't gain weight. I've got inflammation down from the prep. They're resting more. It's a great situation and now i got them at 2100 calories 2000 now they're not food focused because if you just inch it up 20 here 20 here everyone's so food focused and leptin and ghrelin's a little off because you weren't answering the calls and it's really tough you know so i like to just flush right away get calories up and um then from there the food focus is gone and now we can kind of cruise for a bit and you know i i usually pull training back and uh, maybe have like an eight week period with a lot of females because i want to try to get their period back if they're in you know a situation where they can still get their period um and then and then from there we can do whatever you want to do you know your calories are high your period's back uh let's look at labs and then if you know <clears throat> if you want to push and start growing let, let's let's push that um so I, I don't know if i was uh, specific enough but I, th- that's what came to my mind when you asked the yeah. you know, I think that's great. Can you talk a little bit more about when you pull back on training? Obviously, like we're all coaches on this, we get it. But for the people listening, I think, you know, even Sammy said, like, I thought you were crazy. Talk about what that does in the body and and kind of the strategy behind that. Well, you know, if you're coming off of prep, you're probably training five days a week. Although if I've had women who have issues, I'd never take them past four and they get ready for their shows just fine. Um, But let's say you're on four or five days a week. Um, 
you know, I'm going to pull back the volume. I'm going to pull back the days. So if you're on four, you're probably three. If you're on five, you're probably down to four. I'm going to pull back your intensity. So self-governing, you can use RPEs, uh, you know, rate of perceived exertion. And I can say, you know, go to a seven. Um, and, you know, it's going to be different for everyone. But basically, I just want you to stop about three reps shy of failure. Let's just not take things to complete failure. No intensity techniques, um, no drop sets, anything like that. We're just going to let the body rest up a little bit. And what that's doing is it's going to, you know, let the PNS kick in a little more. Um, we get a lot of sympathetic dominance, especially those last four weeks. Calories are low. Stress is high. Am I going to be ready? Is this body part going to come in? I mean, we all go through that. So we're bringing stress down. We're working cortisol down. And, you know, we're letting adrenals rest. And when adrenals rest, the thyroid can come back up. They're all intertwined and connected. And when adrenals are down, your thyroid is normally not healthy. <clears throat> and so all this can play a part. And that's what that rest is doing. It's bringing all the these systems more back into play. And, you know, <clears throat> if your cortisol is high, you're going to lose your period because you're going to favor progesterone production. I'm sorry, um, cortisol production over your progesterone. So by pulling back on that training, you're helping all these systems of the body just kind of do their thing. And it's not a time where you have to get fat. In fact, you know, I, like I said, you can flush them on, get them up and they're on a good amount of calories. And I can cruise you through those eight weeks without really a ton of weight gain. I mean, we want some because we want to get a period back, but you know, you'll see when we put on 20 pounds within eight weeks, like that really should not be happening. Um, so, so yeah, uh, hopefully that, that answers some of that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I was going to say, I did that with a client recently. I did the flush with her and she's up to 2,200 calories and she's gained five pounds from there you go. prep I did the same four thing. weeks. And it's been great. She's like, I have and no cravings. Too, right? Yeah. Yep. She's like, I have no cravings, nothing. Like, she's like, I feel great. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like she did like first couple of times after like first couple of weeks post-show she had her donuts, whatever. You well, know, yeah, everyone's but, gonna have something. I yeah. mean, we're yeah. all. We're human. I, mean, I don't expect no one, you know, to not have any food after, you know, um, right. that, that they want. <laughs> but you know, it's that time where you got to pull back, get those calories up, get that food focus gone. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good strategy. Sammy, did you say you did it too? I did it too, and yeah, I had really good su success with it. So I had a couple clients do it, and now their calories are super high. They're not even up that much weight. It's crazy, and they're they're eating so much. Their training is lower, their cardio is lower. So it's just it's a really cool technique to use, even mm -hmm. for us moving forward. Like I don't think there's ever going to be a show that I'm not going to flush. <laughs> yep, yep. I have to say too, I even did it before prep, before I started prep, just yeah. to like kind of bump my calories a little bit more and I think I got up to like 2400 and then just cortisol down and it was like now my body's just been like it's going great yeah, yeah. so Jason, awesome. if you don't flush a client how would you go about saying like to do a proper reverse like what is a proper reverse good question so um you know I think our industry's been around the block on this you know at one time it was 10 carbon 15 carbon that is not what you want to be doing and I actually was on message boards years ago telling people that was the wrong strategy because post show it's all about recovery and you need to get the calories up and you need to get the calories up to a point where food focus is gone. So, you know, if I'm not going to flush someone, I'm at least try to probably bump them 400, 500 calories. If I can, um, the problem is some people's bodies just are beat down so much that if you do that, I see the weight come on quick. When you do the flush, Proteins lower. You got the juices, the broth. We're we're look, worried about more anti-inflammatory. We got it. Just works better with the body to get the endocrine system cranking, so I can get the calories up. So I'm a big fan of doing it if someone can um, can execute it. The worst thing we want is someone doing that, and then they're also eating pizza and Chipotle. Then yeah, you're gonna get fat. I mean, because I got you on 270 carbs. I got your juice high. I, you know, you got to be you got to be zeroed in and understand what we're doing. Um, but yeah, you got to get it high enough that the food focus goes away or else they're just going to blow it. And so it's different for everyone, but I'd say females, maybe 400, 500 calories, uh, males. I mean, I know for myself, I used to bump myself a thousand and barely gain any weight. Now I have some guys that are more like, uh, endomorphic and maybe they're more around a four or 500 bump, um, hunger plays in too. But the point is for coaches, if you're not flushing, you don't know how to do it. Um, you're not going to take my course and you're not going to figure it out. Then you at least got to bump enough to get that food focus away or else they're just going to blow it. They're going to blow it. They're going to blow it with shitty food. And now your insulin sensitivity is gone. And that insulin sensitivity is something that we can use to stack on top to build. Even when we're not pushing training as hard, if you're insulin sensitive and you got new calories coming in, you're going to add some, some lean tissue. Um, but the worst thing you can do is just start eating shit because you're so food focused. And then you blow that sensitivity right away. And I think all of us, 
probably did a bit of that our first show after our first show. It's hard not to um, because you've just never been, let's call it what it is. You've just never been starved like that before. You know, um, yep. it's so ravenous the last four weeks. And if anyone listening hasn't competed, you know, it's a bitch. And, and, and then as you compete, you get better at it. And you're like, oh, I don't really need all that. I'll have a meal that night and one on Sunday. And then I kind of just want to be back on good food. But your brain doesn't work like that after the first time. You're like, I fucking starved for 12 weeks or 16 weeks and I deserve this, you know? And it's <laughs> we that, did an that episode where we talked about all of the crap that we packed with. Oh, like, yeah. And like, oh, how yeah. you don't do that. <laughs> no, like, I remember, I remember after my first show, luckily, I just don't gain weight that easy. But we went over to, uh, it was my ex-girlfriend, some friend of theirs, and they had a full bowl of Starburst and a full bowl of chocolate uh, peanut M&M's. I ate, I mean, the bowls were like, like that. I ate all of it. We were there like three hours and I ate all of it. Did they I just have a fast. Well, I, well, I just, I didn't care. I, I felt like I was, I was entitled, right? I, I just dieted and I, fuck it, like it tasted good. I'm entitled to this, right? So I just went through it. Luckily it didn't really, I felt high, but it didn't really like, you know, cause it was probably, I don't know, thousand, I don't know how much sugar it was. It was a shit. That's time. rare that it doesn't yeah. do anything. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't do, yeah. I didn't, I still was only up like eight pounds after 10 weeks or something, but I, that's just me. But most people would have been like gaining 10 pounds on that. Um, yeah. So anyways, I think it's tough to probably flush a first time competitor. I don't know if Sammy, you or Kayla did it. If you did, mm -hmm. and that's great. And they followed it. But I think anyone that sees it, it's an excellent strategy. Yeah. If it's their first time, you better have a deep conversation like, hey, I'm going to put mm -hmm. a lot of calories in you. If you can, if you can execute this, it's going to be a beautiful thing. If you can't, we're going to gain weight rapidly. So where are yeah. you? No. Yep. So. And my, my competitor that did it, she was new, but she actually at the first, like, I would say like four days, she felt so full because we haven't been eating that much yep. on prep. Yep. Right. Yep. And so I told her just hang in there and she hung in there. And after like those four days, she started feeling so good. And she started again, losing inflammation. It was, it was a really cool process. So, yeah. So there's, there you go. There's someone who was brand new and was able mm -hmm. to execute. So um, that was just a discussion that, you know, Sammy being a good coach had with her client and she said, I probably can get it done. And so, so they did. Um, but yeah, so I think we went off on a little tangent there. Um, but anyone, you know, if you don't know what the flush is, um, I teach it in my course. Um, I think you can probably find enough info if you Google it. It's just an anti-inflammatory period, but there is a lot of details that go into it. And that's not what this show is really about. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it is very helpful. If you want more information, I'll drop that in the show notes for you guys. Um, or, you know, go listen to the Excellence Cartel. Um, that's another one of Jason's podcasts where they get more in depth into functional coaching, where this is like a little bit more bodybuilding focused. Um, so speaking of that, um, there's yeah. a couple other questions that I just thought of um, when it comes to like competing. And, you know, you've been coaching for a long time. And now we've seen like, even just throughout the years that we've done it, how the industry standards have changed so how has that changed you know for like bikini figure like all of that from when you first started to like now and like how have you like had to like keep up with that you know and keep going with that all right so you know when I started I'm going to date myself there was men's bodybuilding and female bodybuilding so that was it like if you weren't able to like build a lot of muscle you probably didn't get to compete and the shows were a lot smaller and everything was a lot smaller it was more niche and I like the direction it's gone. I like all the extra divisions. I like to serve the extra bodies. I'm sure the purists don't, but um, also from a coaching standpoint, it allows more people into the sport and we all have more. So you're never gonna hear me bitch about the extra divisions ever. Um, but what I can tell you is this, I was sitting there when Dana Lynn Bailey won uh, her pro card um, uh, for uh, women's disease. She was the first women, woman yep. to win it that year at Junior USA. She looked fantastic. You could tell she was natural. Excellent. Now physique, these women have shred, tried to glutes. Uh, I thought they weren't supposed to have shreds, but that's, that's, that's shredded to me. Like when you have striations on your butt, like that's, that's shredded. Um, so the standards have changed. And, and with that, unless you're just a genetic fucking freak, it's more gear, it's more drugs. It just is. And I thought physique was built so that women didn't have to push, but they still for the more, muscular women and I think where it was with Dana was great um but like anything humans push the envelope and it's like okay well if no one else is doing this and I take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and I come in harder I'm gonna win and well judges are human and 
they gravitated towards that better physique. So then the next person goes, well, I got it. So uh, the standards have really changed. And I feel like women's physique at this day and age, love it. Just had a client go pro in it. But I think it's really headed more towards a bodybuilding look. Yeah. Maybe they're not quite as muscular as the old bodybuilders were in women's, but they have those lines and everything. And so I just thought that we were going away from that. So mm -hmm. that's where I feel like that is. Figure, when they first brought it out, was probably about the size that most bikini girls are now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First brought it out. I mean, we're going back to 2003, 2004, somewhere around there. Yeah. And they had like the velvet suits. Like and the they had to wear, suit. yeah. And they had to wear a two piece, which yeah. I still don't fucking understand. Um, mm -hmm. And, but I mean, the delts just weren't cannonballs. You know, they like, were more like a bikini girl. And that's obviously morphed. I mean, these women in figure are, you know, their quads are just split. And even some of them, when they move, they have shredded glutes and these delts are massive. And so, you know, I knew a lot of, hell, I had a client win North Americans as a natural figure girl back in 2004, 2005, natural North Americans. And I'm sure it happens occasionally now, but not, not, not much. <laughs> and, you know, now when she finally went to do her pro shows, she took three years off. We had to put her in bikini because the standards had already changed that quick. And this was a national wow. overall winner. And, um, you know, so figure has, has changed. And then even bikini, you know, when bikini came out, there was no glute tie-ins and all these different things. It was, you know, very much so a fit woman going to the beach with a little extra muscle. And, you know, I really liked that because you could get that accomplished naturally. And really it was just letting the genetics rise to the top or the hard workers. And of course, anything, it all changes. And now it's almost like you almost have to use a little bit of R. You almost have to use a little bit of clan. There are some women I know in the pro ranks that are natural. So there are some getting it done. Um, and I love the look of bikini. It's, you know, as far as a female's division goes, it's probably my favorite look, but it's standard keeps getting bigger too. They've got these big delts on them now and they're pretty lean. So, you know, it's just human nature. It's all pushed further and further. And as a coach who really wants to keep someone healthy, I have to balance like the drugs and how far do you really want to take this? And you got to have conversations with your clients. If you're, if you're out there and you're a newer coach or you're a coach and you're not discussing a female's femininity and what are they willing to kind of give up and what are they, you know, you know, every time I discuss another compound, it's like, well, you know, if your voice, what, how would you feel if your voice drops? How you, you know, how's this? And, you know, I'd have these discussions and some of my, you know, female clients are like, Hey, you know, this did this to me, this did that. And I go, Hey, we, we won't, we won't use that. So I think there has to be open dialogue, but yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of the way the divisions have gone, but you know, men's classic physique, it's the same. Like they kept adding weight, right? Like now these guys are pretty jacked and big. Like they've kept adding 10 pounds here and 10 pounds there. It's all just an evolution. And then if you look at men's physique, I mean, those guys are massive. They don't always have like legs and calves, but their upper bodies are humongous. You're looking at them backstage and you're like, Jesus, because they have no weight cut off. They just keep getting these massive upper bodies. Um, so it's all just morphed and all changed. Um, I saw the very first show in Kentucky where a guy won men's physique and he looked very much like a guy you'd probably see just walking down the beach with a six pack. I mean, that guy wouldn't even sniff last place at this point, you know, uh, <laughs> right. so it's all, it's all evolved. Um, and it is what it is. And the only way that things can change is from up above. Um, mm -hmm. until that happens as coaches, you got to have honest discussions with your clients and try to guide them the best you can and keep them as safe and uh, healthy as you can. Yeah. So Jason with PEDs, so yeah. how would you, um, approach that, I guess, in your clients? Like if they do want to take it, they yep. want to go to the next level, like when, like how, how can you do it a healthier way? And like, how sure. do you judge it? I guess. Sure. So <clears throat> with females, I have a very strict protocol that I'll, I'll tell everyone. Um, it's eight weeks on eight weeks off in the off season. No questions asked. Um, here's why you can take small amounts or you can even take big amounts if you only do it for a small amount of time, the longer a female is subject to an androgen, the long, the, the more likely she is going to start having side effects. So, you know, if I really want to get a body part to maybe grow, I could do four weeks of, of Anabar maybe at 20 MIGs and it'd be very minimal sides, but I couldn't do eight to 12 weeks at 20. They are going to be long lasting sides. So my general for like a female doing bikini or even like, you know, maybe just getting into figure um, and wants to use PEDS, it might be five to 10 megs of R for eight weeks, 
and then we're off. And then I reestablish the period. And if it takes longer than eight weeks to get your period back, then you don't go back on for me. I got to get that LH cranking again and reestablish that signal. Plus, especially if someone says, hey, I want to get pregnant one day. Because once you set that signal signal down, now you're looking at IVF or you know, really trying to you know, use progesterone, cre- or, um, HRT and, and all that. So uh, I, I'm mindful of that as well. Plus just having the period, the female's healthier and they're going to have more longevity in the sport. Um, you know, as far as and non-androgenic ways to grow, I'm a big proponent of GH and insulin in females. There's no androgenic sides. It's a totally different pathway. So why not use a little bit of Anivar and then go down the growth hormone and insulin route? Now, half the time when I say that to a female, oh, I'm not using insulin, you're crazy. I'm like, but you'll put a male hormone in your body that can make your clit permanently bigger and your voice, but you won't tip, <laughs> take a little insulin. As long as we cover it with carbs, you're not even gonna know it's fucking in you, but your pumps will be better and you're gonna get leaner. Oh, okay. So it's like, really? Like, seriously? Mm -hmm. I can pop a pill. It's so easy. Well, yeah, it's so easy, but it's also an androgen. So um, I've been a big proponent for years of using growth hormone and and a little bit of insulin with my females and just enough androgens in the off season. Now when it's prep time, listen, I try not to put you under more than 12 uh, weeks. So if it's a 16 week prep, usually I'm using the growth, maybe a little insulin, um, maybe like I get like a product called Abolic or maybe even some Osterine the first four weeks. And then I'm like, okay, let's bring in the Anivar and I will leave it go for 12. I mean, it's prep. Like you've decided to do this, you know what you're doing, like, you know, the consequences. And so I will leave it in for 12 weeks only in prep, but during season it's uh, it's no more than eight weeks for an androgen load. So what do you do if you have like a client who competes at a show and then they ha- don't have another show for like another eight weeks, like, and they're already on like, Anivar. Uh, that's a good question. You can either drop it to five MIGs or you can take them off and use something to bridge it because I'll definitely have them on growth. Um, there's there's the Osterine, there's Abolic 4, which is a cool product from True Nutrition. All those will help hold muscle. And Abolic 4 really does feel a lot like Anivar, but it's not going to tax the liver. It's actually anti-inflammatory. I really like it. Um, and so I'll use a bridge like that. But if the female's like, listen, my voice has already dropped a little bit. I'm not having any extra sides. I just want to stay on it. Okay, this is prep. This is a different animal. We'll stay on it. But mm-hmm. if they're concerned about that, which is totally legit, I've used those uh, situations there, growth hormone, abolic, growth hormone, osterine, and um, we'll bridge it for a bit and then maybe get them back on like four weeks out, something like that. I think it's really important to note is like, too is that everyone is very very different how they respond to things like especially like you know coaches have do have their like protocols of like what they would start with kind of thing but you really don't know until you try something but like something that I've learned from you is like always start with the smallest dose possible because you don't know how it's going to affect you and 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 then just kind of reevaluate it from there so even if you guys are like doing this on your own at all like which you shouldn't anyways but that's kind of how you should start versus like I've heard it before where I was told one time that you can take 25 milligrams of Anivar for a long period of time and that's fine for a female I mean I've I got like, oh. a friend on 25 he's a guy and he's a responder but he's taking 25 megs of bar now and I mean he looks freaky um that's a big that's a pretty big dose uh-huh. um and even at 20 uh for a decent amount of time there's gonna be some side effects um uh, yeah. It just depends how much and, you know, how you are. Like I had a female, she's very much an outlier, started on a little bit of primo. She was figure, wanted to do a pro card. And we started just 10 megs a week. She just wasn't getting sides at all. Nothing with her hair, nothing with her voice, nothing with her clit. I'm like, do you think that's real? But I mean, she wasn't really losing weight. She's getting leaner. I think we ended it up at like 175 megs a week, which should have destroyed her. But there was no side effects. There was no Uh side effects. Mm-hmm. And she went pro. I mean, she looked phenomenal. But, you know, I only got there by starting at 10 and just listening to her. And there was nothing going on. But, you know, I don't think I'll ever see a person, a female like that again, probably. Yeah. That's why it's also important to really communicate with your coach and tell them these things because, you know, otherwise, how are they going to know? They're not going to know anything. And then you end up at the end of prep and then you have all these side effects. And you're like, oh, well, this was happening early on. It's like, okay, well, you didn't say anything. So, you know, how, how are we supposed to know that? 100%. You know? It's supposed to be teamwork and a client should not be scared to say, Hey, I don't want to take this or Hey, hey <clears throat> I'm getting these sides and I'm actually not okay with those. What can we do? Yep. Yep. Exactly. Good to go on that one. Okay. 
Next question. Um, have you ever pulled a competitor from prep? And if so, why did you do that? Yeah, for sure. Um, usually for not responding, um, you know, the prep's just not going the way it should. And, um, something's going on deeper. There's a, there's a deeper level there that something's going on. You know, if someone's in a five, six, 700 caloric deficit doing an hour of cardio and you're not dropping weight, there's something wrong. And my people, I trust them. Like, I don't, I'm not one of those people like, Oh, you're not following it. You're not doing this. It's like, if you're in prep and you're paying me and you know, I work with national pro athletes, most times I think my people are doing the work, you know? So that doesn't really ever come out of my mouth. So if that's happening, um, and we just can't get it to get it to roll. And, you know, you're eight weeks in, you drop two pounds, like something's going on. Right. So I keep pushing it, you know, down the other times I've, I've done it when people have gotten really food focused and eating disorder patterns were starting to come out. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. Uh, if that starts to become habit and it's, you know, say they're binging and they're doing it every week and we're in prep. I mean, that's, that's a bad sign. And it's a really bad sign for afterwards, because at that point, you know, calories are going to get worse. You know, car is going to only get higher and that's going to just fuel that even worse to really set off problems after. If they're binging now when they get on stage in their underwear, think what they're going to do when they don't have to get on stage in their underwear. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You remove that there. It's just going to be a problem. So any eating disorder signs, anything like that, I might give you one shot at it, but then after that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling it. So, you know, not responding to, to normal caloric deficits, um, eating, eating disorders, uh, type behavior for sure. Those would be my, probably my main two. How long would you say, like, how long would you give it if their body's not responding? Like how long of a time frame? I usually would probably give them about four pulls. So it could be about eight weeks. Um, because you know, calories can be worked pretty high in the off season. Right. And there are some people that, they have highly adaptive metabolisms. And what that means is you pull 40 carbs. They're hungry for like two days. And all of a sudden they're not really hungry anymore. And their body's adapted. It's great for survival shitty to get peeled. So you got to keep moving it down till you finally get into a real deficit. And the, and the, and the, and the thing about highly adaptive, highly adaptive metabolisms, as you add calories, it adapts too. So they don't get fat. So you could have someone on, I mean, I've had a guy, um, no Austin stout. I don't think he'll say mine. I mean, he eats five, six, 7,000 calories in a, in an off season. And then when I would prep him, we'd have to get down to 1800. And you're thinking, why the fuck? But it's because every time he bumps food, his body adapts. It's the same on the way down. Yeah. So that, uh, you know, that can be happening too. So I'd give someone four pools to really make sure we finally are in a, in a good deficit. And, you know, that could be about eight weeks. And after that, I mean, if it's we're one to two pounds down and nothing's happening, hunger's high, something else is going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we talk a lot about, you know, kind of the reverse and, and the function, because that's important to all of us in, in this space, but there is a time and place to push, especially if you're in prep. Um, I mean, you're just going to have to, and I, and I never want that to get like twisted because as coaches, like there's going to be a time that, that you're going to have to push a client. Jason, give us like one of the extremes, like one's a time that you like just had to go all in with somebody either, you know, their calories, their training, yep. like what did that look like? Yep. Um, there's plenty of times that, you know, I've had to put people on four or five, six protein veggie days. So for me that depending on your size, that can be anywhere from 180 to 200 grams of protein. And then I just have you add one to two cups of greens at, at a meal. Um, so it's probably eight, 900 calories. Um, and then give them a refeed. Um, I've used uh, probably a couple 24 hour fasts too in prep. Okay. Um, and I've had cardio as high as two hours, but it was all like walking. Um, so that would probably be the, the roughest, but their body was responding all the way down. It wasn't like, you know, at 10 weeks out, I'm doing this. These are, you know, getting the last bit of fat off. So we know that the body was at least healthy coming down. It was responsive. Yeah. Now maybe we got just, you know, some women carry more in their glutes. Right. And the rest of them's in, you know, ready. And you're like, fuck, like I, I you know, what, 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 I, what do I, what can I do? Like, I got to just keep pushing. Um, so yeah, I definitely have had people on probably six days of protein veggies, one refeed and two hours of cardio. For sure. <laughs> Fun times. I mean, Thank God I, I never had to talk that. about because there's so much out there now about how you shouldn't go under 1100 calories and this and that, but there is a person and there's a time and place that somebody's going to have to. And I think we just have to like throw that out there. As You're well. going to have to. And that's why you also want a coach that knows what the fuck they're doing so they can fix it on the other side. 
And yep. that's when I got into functional because if I'm going to push someone to unhealthy levels, I want to know how to fix you. Now, I don't think you do this because I know you well enough, but, um, and I don't have this in a contract either, but even if I'm, if I'm working with a functional client, I do just kind of have a disclaimer and, and I say, Hey, listen, like if we're going to bring you into a caloric deficit, give me 30 days to like reverse you out so that I know your body's going to be okay. They don't have to commit to that, but do you do that with prep clients? I don't, I probably should. I mean, it's a good practice. I, I don't think, you know, anyone should probably leave their coach, you know, the first 30 days. Um, you know, if someone's been doing this for years, um, I do have some guys that just drop off and, you know, they're fine. Um, but if you, number one, don't really know how to maneuver it. Number two, have struggled in the past. Um, and number three, it's maybe your first time. I would definitely stay with your coach um, to get reversed out properly and get at least the plan set up, you know, um, you came that far, you paid that much. What's one more month to get everything kind of mapped out for you, especially if you have no idea what, how that mapping out would look post-show. Yeah. So I don't have it in a contract, but I do think it's a good idea. Cool. All right. Um, let me look at the notes here. I lost my spot because we've been jumping around a little bit. <laughs> Um, oh yeah. Okay. Going into the functional side of things, um, you had mentioned that in the last, what we were just talking about and how, you know, when we go into prep, we have to know that this is not the most healthy thing to do. So there, as a athlete, you have to know that these things are going to come out on the other side and your labs may not look the greatest. Mine did not. Um, I gave myself adrenal PCOS the last show that I did, but I also prep for a very long time. And so we learn things coming out of that. So, you know, now that you do have the functional side of things, do you feel like, I mean, obviously it's helped a lot, um, but how do you think that that started to really like turn corners for you in like the coaching industry and stuff by adding that part to, to it? Yeah. You know, at least for me, number one, I felt better taking people to extremes. Um, So, you know, I, I remember, used to you'd have a female client and it was gonna be about 50 50 the next year whether they were gonna respond well or not you know and you're like oh, i don't know i fed her up we'll see how this goes and then you know be like 50 percent would respond and 50 percent one and then you know, you're like fuck like i did everything right like what's going on but i don't know i'd probably get them back to training too early and you know i just wasn't doing everything quite right and that didn't sit well with me so i think number one it's just i feel better if i do have to push someone uh, morally that I'm, I'm educated in this, not just macros and, and, you know, training. Um, number two, I mean, it opened up a, f- a, a way more broader, um, amount of clients that I can take. Right. So, um, and that's cool. And it's a completely different sense of pur- purpose. Um, you know, it's one thing to get someone who's already, you know, freaking built great into a show. Cool. Like, but they already have a great body. You know, it's another thing to get someone who is, you know, struggling, you know, maybe had a great body. They're, they're not happy. And then you can turn that around for them. And, and, and I think there's, you know, a little bit more uh, satisfaction there uh, a little bit. Um, and then number two, like, it, let's be honest. Um, a lot of coaches are listening. When you invest in your education, you can demand more monthly. So, you know, you make more cash. Uh, I, I'd be remiss to not say that, you know, I, I'm a business owner and I'm in it to make a living. Um, and anyone who doesn't say that, like, oh, I don't care about any money. Well, I don't fucking believe you. I know you like to help people. And that's probably your first thing, just like me, but you want to make some money too. Um, and so the more education you get, the more you can charge, let's be honest. Um, but I will tell you, it's weird to me. I'm the same guy that's always been able to help people get credit and get them on stage. I have less competitor clients now, and I know how to fix pretty much anything. Mm-hmm. it's like oh man he does functional i don't know if people out there just like i don't want to prep with someone who knows functional just kill me and you know fuck my body up and let's roll i don't get it um i really don't like oh, i would Jason, think- you're getting all of the people that were competitors and crossfit athletes and now are dealing with weight loss resistance so you're still getting true. them just in a different light <laughs> true but i mean i could keep them healthy you know and, and go know. a long way and they want to deal with that shit but I, hey you know what you want to dig yourself a grave and then come see me cool but like, i just don't get it it's like i have less competitors now and I've got way more knowledge than I ever had. 
um, to get, know, the, to get the job I think a part done. of it is just because from my understanding, at least with B- Bikini, for example, like Bikini girls want to be part of a team and sure. not that you're not part of a team because you have so much education and everything like that. But I think sometimes the camaraderie of like female team, I think that's where I think that comes in from because I've never been a part of a female team. So that's like where I've always struggled where it's, I'm used to having like a bodybuilder coach. I like having a male coach to be honest, but, but also the camaraderie of like having a female coach is just so different. So I think that's where it comes from, but I, I am surprised that you don't have more, but also, you know, you're, you have so many different areas that you're knowledgeable in that I feel like people probably just don't, I don't know. Yeah. Like, but I, you're right on the team thing. I get that. Um, and I definitely get that, you know, a female coach provides a different touch than a male coach. 100%. But you do um, know a lot about the female body. So I will give that to you. I mean, like, I'm you like, know, I, I'm like, you I, know more about it than I do. Yeah. I can keep, I can keep you healthy, you know, and if I, if, if we have to push, I can get you back. But, and, and I know I don't, I don't um, push as much, you know, competitors anymore either. Um, but it's just, it's just been a weird occurrence for the last five years that I've noticed. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, just give me prep still doing great. And when I do get competitors, I'm like, yes, let's, let's do this. And, you know, and, and rock, but, um, yeah. So I think, you know, adding the functional, uh, for me was the best career move I could have made. Um, and I feel like it just makes me a very well-rounded coach. And I feel like our team is very well-rounded as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's something that, you know, I'm really proud of and, and glad that I invested in that education. So, mm-hmm. well, I, think, too. Yes. I, think, I have a follow-up question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sammy. I think it's cool, too, because, I mean, like, look at me. Like, I'm a pro. I work with a different company. Like, you know, Jamie's my coach. But now I'm coming back to you because, you know, you've helped me so much. So, you know, it's just everybody has different specialties and, sure. you know, you have a purpose and you have a purpose in my life and you're helping me so much. And I don't think I could have got to where I am like now and I'm excited to where I'm going. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> no, I'm excited where you're going to, we'll, we'll get you all fixed up and you'll get back on stage for sure. Better than, than ever. Good. Me too. At some point when I decide to compete again, um, <laughs> I, this does tie in a little bit. So when there's a lot of competitors that work with really just a macro coach. I mean, that's out there. So if you were to give them advice, let's say, like you said, it used to be 50, 50, right? Like maybe it's going to work, maybe it's not. And you were doing other stuff too. It wasn't just macro coaching. So if somebody is working with, you know, even a high level macro coach, how much time would you give them at the beginning of a prep to say, Hey, this is going to work or this isn't like you might want to switch courses. You really don't know till you dig in, you know, there's no way to know because most macro coaches know to reverse people, right? So they're going to try to get the calories up. Um, they just aren't looking at labs and worrying about really anything hormonally. So let's say Kayla, who had given herself adrenal PCOS and, um, you know, I, I was, I was there, you know, I was the one pushing, um, but, you know, she didn't stick around with me to let me look at labs long enough. Right, Kayla? So that was I, my first mistake. So. <laughs> She was training too hard and pushing too hard. So I'm not sure if I was involved in it or not, but my no, point is, me. you know, I will you take have, full responsibility for that. Yeah. So, um, you, uh, you, you have to take some of it in your own hands, but you know, if you're with a macro coach, um, I think that you should probably get some labs done and at least get someone reading something. Um, you know, I'll read labs. You guys probably offer it as a service too. Like at least if you love that coach, at least invest in some labs and don't just go to your doctor because they're not going to run it. Like if you're going to have someone read it, like reach out to me, I'll tell you what labs I need. Uh, My hormone clinic can get them very cheap and we know it's done. At least have someone read your labs so that you know where you're at because it's impossible. So like I was going back to Kayla, if she would have been with the coach, just fed her up. She really wouldn't even have known that she had adrenal PCOS other than she was having symptoms, but she really mm-hmm. wouldn't have known. And she would have been like, well, my macros are up and you know, he's got me eating well, or she's got me eating well, I should be ready to prep. And then you go into prep and you got adrenal issues and you got PCOS and your body doesn't respond. So um, it's really hard to know until you take a look at those labs. I mean, you yeah. know, you can kind of tell something's off, but you got to take a look. So I would hire someone at least to read those labs for you and at least take that part into your own hands if your coach isn't doing it. 
I think that's really good advice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think that, you know, um, like anyone who's listening, you should definitely almost when you're coach, like when you're doing a consult call with a coach, you should really be interrogating them as well and asking them their education, yep. things like that. And ask them like, what kind of approaches they take? Do they look at labs? Do what, like, what do they do? Is it just macros? Is it just training? Is there anything extra on there? Are they, you know, looking at your health, your symptoms, things like that too? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I can think of some of the top coaches um, that just do prep. And from what I've been told, they don't care about labs at all. Mm. Well, so for example, like I have never gotten labs, Jason, before you, well, I, I had it either. I was working with other coaches, but like, yeah. I've never done labs until working really with you. So that was cool. I, I hadn't either. And I had been, so Jason was my very first coach ever. And so, but I had went to him cause I knew I wanted to get labs and cause I knew something was wrong. And I had heard like, I think I was listening to the excellence cartel and that's how I figured it out. And I was like, this sounds like me. I was like, I need to do this. And I had been to the doctor and they wanted to put me on birth control, had me on Accutane, all this stuff. Within a month of like doing that, like my acne was like cleared up and I was like, okay, well I'm sold like functional. It is like, and so, yeah, then I had a little like three month stint after my, <laughs> after I won my pro car, I was like, I gotta like see if there's something else out there. Like, you know, I just gotta try something else. Cause this is like my only coach. And then I was like, yeah, big mistake. So um, <laughs> that was hard lesson learned, but those, yeah. those labs looked way worse than the first labs. Let me tell you that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but we still fixed her up and I, you know, those listening, we've developed a, a, a process with Kayla. She can yep. only put for four weeks and on the fifth week, I don't give a fuck how good she feels. I don't care if she's bench pressing 200 pounds, she's got to deload and she's got to eat more and she's got to, we pull back any cardio if we are doing it. And that's in prep too. So now her preps are 20 weeks long. It yep. is what it so is. How did, you guys, how did you guys figure that out? Uh, because our, she's cortisol driven every time you let her just go at her own leisure in terms of training she'll fucking stand there for three hours and she'll have cortisol and it just doesn't work and then from that her adrenals will push her uh her uh ovaries to overproduce uh testosterone and then she gets thin mm -hmm. air and she gets acne and there's other things too her progesterone tanks out so she's relatively estrogen dominant i can't even remember if her thyroid was doing well it probably wasn't thyroid great. has always been fine Okay, you're right. Well, no, like yep. three seven. I said I was surprised about that. Yep. Yep. But yep. She you get labs every weeks, do you? With that? No. You you know. lab. No. It was some symptoms and everything. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's just what we figured out. Um, because I had always done like 12 week preps and I got ready. Like I was ready in 12 weeks and stuff. So like going into this prep, now that we have 20, I'm like not concerned whatsoever that we're gonna get lean enough, you know, because we have plenty of time. Um, so now for me it's just like the whole new process of like four weeks on one week deload four weeks on one week deload and it's just like to get that through my head because I just like I love to train and like when I train like I train hard like I'm not one of those that goes in and just like balls to the wall like RPE 10 on everything by any means but like it's just really hard on my central oh, nervous system. but you love your compound movements if I don't if I don't you know cap it and yep. you know that's yeah. going to be a big taxer yep. on her sympathetic right. nervous system and yep. uh, so yeah. So, you know, we were a four and one with her and, um, you know, some people might be a six and one, but like, I have a girl right now getting ready for a show. She's got Hashi's and she's a four and one. Um, that way I can keep it under control or TPO ABs don't get too far out of control. And during those times we're bringing down cortisol, we're bringing down inflammation, we're giving them a little more food and, you know, it's a nice little mental break too. You know, you get an extra 60 carbs and you get a little more pep mm -hmm. in your step and, you know, it helps metabolism, helps everything. And uh, yep. so far it's really helped her stay healthier and her body's just clipping her along right now. So. I think what's so important about that, though, is that, you know, you've worked with these competitors multiple times, like, you know what their body is going to do. And sometimes it doesn't respond the exact same way, but you have an idea because you've worked in an off season and through preps. And that's that's really important for people who are listening to understand that when you're working with a coach and you find the right one to not just like ditch them because they actually can probably help you even better knowing your body. Right. I oh, thanks that. for taking me pro. I'm going to see you later. <laughs> a lot of competitors. I'm just messing with you, Kayla. I love you. <laughs> so I'll so never you, forget that. <laughs> and you have for so obviously I know and like we all know, but what about for our listeners? Like, what do you do when you're trying to tell somebody, like, how do you explain it to them? Like the benefits of you know, lowering your training and everything like that. Of course, like me and Kayla like had a really like and Jane too, I'm sure, like had a really hard time you know, listening to that. Yeah. Um, so like, What's what the do you best message? 
Yeah. So, you know, for me, if someone comes to me, I have an extensive amount of forms and I'm going to already know that they've got issues. And most people seek me out already because there is things going on. You know, if you're a newer coach or a younger coach, or you've always been a prep coach, maybe people aren't seeking you out. So it's a little harder discussion, right? Because they're coming to you and they're like, let's lose fat. Right. And then mm -hmm. so you got to have a, a process for the coaches out there listening that kind of helps you figure out if someone has issues. Uh, so you need to be asking them about their digestion, their mental game. Um, you know, how are they sleeping? How is, uh, you know, uh, bowel movements? Get a good uh, metabolic questionnaire set up for them. And then once you get those answers back, you, you say, all right, listen, I really need to get labs because look, you're not ready to diet. Look at all these problems. Okay. We get the labs and then the numbers show it. And so when I show someone, listen, your cortisol is 20, it should be 10 to 15. Um, your thyroid is 2.2. It should be at least 3.3 up to 4.4. I can show them all these numbers and say, listen, this is from overdoing it and under eating. I've got to pull your training back to get these things ready so that your body will perform. We've got to pull back so that we can push forward. So it's, it's, it might be a step back, but it's so we can take two forward. And here's, here's the writing on the wall. Like here it is, I can show it to you. Um, if they won't do labs, at least have that extensive form where you're asking all those questions and say, look at this. How do you expect to get lean when you, you're, you're pooping once every three days? How do you expect to get lean when your gut's hurting? How do you expect to get lean when you can barely get out of bed? It looks like your adrenals aren't great. Like, you know, you're, you're drinking eight cups of coffee a day. How do you expect your body to really, you know, you can put it back that way and say, listen, I want to get this to the point where you're healthy again and your body will respond. And so to do that, I have to pull back on training because training is a stress and you probably got other stresses in your life, but I can't take away your job. I can't change your relationship. I can't address your kids. So I can take your training back and stop letting your stress buckets over full overfill. That's going to bring that cortisol down. That's going to bring that inflammation down. And then your body is going to start operating more more optimally again yeah that's a good way to put it and this is why we love jason because he's and, just straightforward okay i'm gonna have a lot of my clients listen to this episode <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely i might have um, to replay it too <laughs> guys should just minute out where things were said and then you just say check this at minute 58 check this at <laughs> yeah. all i put time stamps on everything yeah. what you really need to hear <laughs> <laughs> um all right. Well, we should definitely wrap it up. Um, it's been about an hour, so I don't want to take too much more of your time, Jason, but I guess like last little bit of like wrapping it up. I am, um, if you have any sort of like advice for a first time competitor, um, you know, what would that ultimately be? Yeah. So first time competitor, first and foremost, uh, I think you should really make sure that competing is something that you want to do. And the reason I'm saying that is, is because if you like your body, as it is, you are probably never going to look at it the same. And if you're good with that and you want to always be getting better, great. And I've been trying to do this for 22 years and I'm totally fine that I did it. But I think in my 40s, I finally like, yeah, I like my physique. In my 20s and 30s, I really didn't. And so you got to be willing to take that seriously. Like it, you are never going to look at it the same. And even when you're lean compared to the rest of the world, you might feel fat, and especially if you're a female and you're going to get small and you're going to love it and you're going to get tons of attention. And then when you put the body fat back on, you're not going to have the shoulder carve outs and things are going to be different. And you've got to be able to be like, I can't maintain that year round and you got to be okay with it. Number two, uh, if you're going to do it on your own, fine. I don't recommend it. But if you're going to do it on your own, make sure you've researched and understand general how to track macros, how to do this properly. If you're going to hire a coach, go back to Sammy's advice, really interrogate them, like find out their processes. Um, are they going to help you post show? Are they going to, you know, be gone? Are they just, some people are just prep coaches and they, and they don't really care about uh, having people stay on after not all, but just do your research. Um, if a coach is super cheap, you're probably gonna get a super cheap effort. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you right now, the, those who are good are not cheap expect 400 or better probably on a prep per month for a good coach i'm not saying there aren't good coaches at 200 i'm just telling you it's like anything else in life you got to pay for something good i think that's probably about it and then i guess the last piece of advice would be post show is really important and you're going to want some guidance and um you're going to want to pig out and there needs to be a balance there um, or else you're going to look at yourself 10 weeks later and be really upset. 
Mm-hmm. So absolutely. I think that's all really small advice. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, with that, we're going to end there and we appreciate you so much for coming on and talking to us today. Um, I'm always, we'll I'm always known as the first guest. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Jason. You're yeah. welcome. All right. So we'll have this uploaded um, Friday. When you guys hear this, it'll already be Friday, obviously, but um, we'll get that going and then we will see you guys next week. <laughs> see ya.